Hello, Dark Souls fans, and this is a bit of a special episode of the Let's Die Horribly series. It's, for those of you who are just watching the series for the first time, this is actually being recorded around the time that episode 45 is about to be recorded. So, uh, my character is a bit advanced, and also there's some sound quality and narration quality changes that you're going to notice once you get to episode 1 that are probably going to be slightly disappointing. I'm sorry. This is after having 45 episodes worth of practice, so bear with me. Anyhow, the reason I bring this up is because I was talking a lot, particularly in episodes 32 and I believe 42 or somewhere in the early 40s, about the rolling system of Dark Souls 3. And if you've been watching them in order, you've just seen the video where I go through a bunch of different aspects of the movement and combat system of Dark Souls 3 to test if it's suitable, if it has the same bugs as Dark Souls 2, or if it's more in line with Dark Souls 1 and therefore much more usable, because I found Dark Souls 2 to be a pain in the butt. However, there are some issues I've noticed to do with the way that negative edge rolling works. So let's just go, go over the rolling system for those of you not super familiar. So in Dark Souls in general, rolls, backsteps, running, and jumping, they all happen on the same button. In Dark Souls 2 and 3, you can customize jumping to happen on a separate button. I'll get into this later. But the important thing is that they all happen on the same button, particularly that dashing, rolling, and backstepping all happen on the same button no matter what. And this is important because rolling and backstepping happen when you release the button. Now, you'll see in the video there's a little gray square which goes white. That's when I hit my roll button. Well, roll, dash, backstep, whatever. That's when I hit that button. Now, running, of course, is positive edge, or when you press it. And then when you press jump, like if, sorry, when you press the button after you're running, it doesn't matter if you press a release, it still works. If you press the button and hold it and aren't moving, you will eventually backstep, but it's always faster to negative edge it, or to do it on release, than it is if you're just holding it. A little bit faster. But yeah, backstepping is a bit more reasonable. But backstepping also has no invincibility frames. Rolling, on the other hand, is always negative edge. You release the button, you get the roll. This is normal, right? You know, you do a thing. You're Even if you're fighting an enemy, you go over here and fight an enemy. I'm in this area because no, I don't want to spoil for people who haven't seen this series yet because this is not going to be in the episode order. Anyway, if I'm rolling, you know, it's negative edge. I, I can, I mean, I can, for whatever reason, sprint while locked on doesn't matter, it's always negative edge. And I actually, in episodes that I mentioned, complain about this. I'll go into more detail near the end, but the important things I thought, well, it'd, be, it'd make a lot more sense for, just in general, for rolling to be positive edge and for running to be on a different button. But what I was thinking was, okay, whatever, I mean, that's probably a good idea, but would FromSoft even do that? I mean, why would they? Rolling is just on release. That's just how they do it, I guess. And then I talked to some people and asked them about Dark Souls, or not asked them, but I told them about my problem with it, and they were agreeing with me, yeah, rolling on release is a pain in the butt. I really can't stand it either, and pointed out something which is rather interesting. This is not the case in Dark Souls 1. So we're back in Dark Souls 1, and if the character looks familiar, this is because I've actually been playing this character three times. Like, Dark Souls 3's version of it is the third time i played this character. This is actually a character concept I really like, but this is a character I've been playing for... This is my second run of Dark Souls 1, and I also played in Dark Souls 2, which I'll get into in a sec, and I'm playing in Dark Souls 3. But if you notice, rolling is on press if I'm locked on. Now, if I'm not locked on, it remains on release. Like, if I'm holding, it's running. I have to release the button to roll. And back step is the same thing, where I... If I backstep, then I just, like, I can hold it, and it'll eventually backstep, or I can tap it, and it'll just backstep immediately. But if I'm rolling backwards or to the side, in Dark Souls 1, I can press the button. It's only forward that I have the option of sprinting. I'm not even sure why that's the case, but forward, you have to release. Though the person I was talking to pointed out that is a high-risk, high-reward option, so it's not it's the worst thing in the world. But any rolling away or rolling to the sides... You, you don't have to, oops, you press the button. So, on the frame, I could wait until the exact frame I get attacked, which I'm not really demonstrating. But, I can wait until the exact frame, and it'll just, oops, I was going forward that time. And it'll dodge.
Ups. Ah, I'm preempting it a bit, but yeah. And so my point is, is that I can dodge by pressing. You see, I'm pressing the button and holding it, and I'm dodging. Only while locked on, mind you. But the point is, is that FromSoft would be able to do this. Like, this is not something that's against the Dark Souls design philosophy. This is something that's that was originally in Dark Souls, and apparently also in Demon Souls. Which is actually why I suspect this happened. Because, you see, in Dark Souls 2, they changed it so that jumping could be on its own button. So it was either press the left stick down or B, or this is the Xbox controls because the PC version uses those. Circle would be the PlayStation equivalent. But the point is they made jump a separate button. Now, Dark Souls 2 is some other problems too, but the thing is, if you notice, you know, you roll and roll, like, running is positive edge, rolling is negative edge. But also, if I'm locked on, I'm still, no, rolling remains negative edge. And jumping remains positive edge. One reason I suspect they might have made it work this way is because, if you notice, I can actually run, I can rather roll in all directions. I, in Dark Souls 1, I didn't really point it out, but I can only roll to the side or backwards, whereas in Dark Souls 2, I can roll in all directions, which is kind of convenient. Except that there's no way to do it without doing negative edge. Now, Dark Souls 2 is a slower game than Dark Souls 3, so it's not as big of a deal. The problem is more input lag, which you'll probably notice if you're watching the white square and watching when I jump. This input lag is actually... It holds for every action, I noticed. The point is, though, not so much input lag, which is what I was really testing in the previous episode you would have watched, episode 0. That's why I was testing it, because Dark Souls 2 has this problem. But it's more that, yeah, okay, you can run in all directions while t locked on, while or roll in all directions, either way. But it's... There's no reason to. Like, Dark Souls 1, you could roll on press. You didn't have to release the button. And Dark Souls 2 demonstrated that they wanted... They were willing to change around the control scheme somewhat. So what I'm wondering, although I have I have an idea of why this was the case, is why didn't they change it so that instead of this being jump controls B, why not instead have it be dash controls B, or run controls, whatever, but instead of it being hold down the button to run versus press it, or rather release it to roll, hold down a different button to run, and then you just press this to roll, and it doesn't matter if you're locked on or not, it's just you press it to roll. That would have made a lot more sense to me, but I think the reason they didn't do it is because, as far as I know, in Demon Souls, there was no jump. Jump was added in Dark Souls, to my knowledge. So it would make sense from a programming perspective that maybe they just had it all hard-coded bound to one button, at the whole rolling behavior, and then when Dark Souls 2 came around, they decided, well, we'll put jump... Because jump had some issues. Like Doing a jump is a pain in the butt, unless you have a separate button for it. It's not terrible, but it's mildly annoying. So I guess they decided, well, we'll just solve that problem by making jump its own button, which at first glance kind of makes sense until you think, well, that problem is also solved if you put run on its own button, and you also get positive edge rolling and backstepping, which is just handy for the player and also makes it easier to balance because now the developers know for sure that when a player is rolling, they're rolling potentially at the first possible frame or the last possible frame, but they're not delayed by having to release, so the developer can actually reduce the amount of invincibility frames rolling has while keeping it as effective as it normally is, which would also help one of the issues that Dark Souls 3 has apparently in multiplayer, and I actually have experiences a bit myself. Rolling is really strong. Everyone rolls all the time. Now, the thing with that is, of course, that's because rolling is really strong, because it kind of has to be, because like, Dark Souls 3... Which we'll go back to, I guess. So Dark Souls 3 is, being a much faster game, a lot worse when it comes to actually trying to fight with the whole negative edge roll thing, because, you know, you, you have to release. But like I said, in multiplayer, it's a bigger problem, because in multiplayer, like, you have, I think it's like 28 frames of invincibility out of 60, even a CT FPS timer, you have 28 frames of invincibility, which... I believe the roll is 36 frames total, so there's very little time to actually hit someone who's just spamming roll. And you can buffer it, so you can just spam it over and over and over again, and there's, like, at most about, like, 120 milliseconds to hit them. On the other hand, if you have it on press, 
you could reduce it to like 20 to 24 frames invincibility frames it would work just as effectively because the thing is that those extra frames like 28 frames only really makes sense if you are dealing with this variable delay beforehand but you, because of the release because press and release does take a little while like it takes potentially longer than just press so what ends up happening is that now you would have less invincibility frames but you'd have just the same dynamic in single player like pve would have the same dynamic because when something tries to hit you you would press the button and immediately you'd roll it would actually feel a lot better because you'd be rolling right on the frame and there's a lot of stuff in dark souls 3 which you'll see later for those of you the first time watching you will see this a lot a lot of the boss fights anything with boreal valley in the name it comes up you will need to be rolling you have the rolls on point but they also give you almost half a second of invincibility because you basically have to guess for a lot of the attacks when exactly they're going to come since they're so fast and there's no real reaction like they're a bit faster than reactability because you have to release you can press on reaction but the release on reaction becomes i feel like is a guess so if it was press and reaction they could reduce the number of iframes to somewhere between 20 and 24 which would make multiplayer feel a lot better because now you wouldn't have just this tiny little window to hit people who are rolling around you and it would also make pve feel better because now you just anything that hits you that you have to react to and like i said there's a lot of it in three not so much in one and two and i thought that's all it was in one i thought it was just one was a slower game but no one has we just saw on press when you're locked on rolling pre it, it's on press positive edge rolling when locked on to something if you're going to the sides or backwards dark souls 2 and 3 have no positive edge rolling and frankly i think if they had done that it would have made the game feel a lot better both for pve because it'd be better moments when you're just barely missing an attack rather than i should have missed that if this game had positive edge rolling which comes up all the time or well not or and multiplayer would feel better because now the dynamic of multiplayer is one where rolling is only invincible for a little under two-thirds of its length rather than almost all of it like 80 something percent of it so it's i, I think that really should have been done and clearly from soft is willing to mess around with their control schemes like i said my only guess is demon souls did it and demon souls sorry demon souls didn't have jump and then it just became easier to code in jump on top of run and roll and backstep all being on one button rather than trying to extricate run from that button keep jump on that button and then make that entirely positive edge anyway that's all i have to say a lot there but this has been bugging me especially with the boss fight if you get to episode 44 or so you will see why it's been bugging me actually it bugs me in several episodes most of the boss fights about half the boss fights i'd say it bugs me a lot the other half are built more like demon souls bosses where you can actually kind of maneuver around them and you're dealing more with intelligently placing yourself rather than having to roll on reaction but for the other half of the bosses a lot of it is roll on reaction or very nearly on reaction so that's why it comes up anyway i hope you enjoyed that for those of the, you watching for the first time thank you and well you'll see the rest of the let's play as it goes along enjoy the rest of the let's play and for those of you who are watching after having watched the rest of the let's play i mean thanks for watching as usual and until the next one goodbye